expected so from talking about my experience uh, i think consulting is something that i always look forward to do right i think that is something that i always went ahead and asked people as to what it is and it's wasn't very surprising for me as to like when i came here came here what the work is i think especially the learning curve is something that i was looking forward to go ahead and see as like when you go ahead and about learn about new markets and do various like analysis and stuff so that thing that is consulting for me so what you basically do over here is Uh, you're given a case when you go ahead and enter as, enter as an intern. You work with associates, you work with partners, you work with managers, and you then go ahead and strategize as to what could be best for a company uh, that your client is right. And as as a consulting firm, your job at that point is to like go ahead and sell, give you give them the best solution solution as to what the what is the next thing they could do to like go ahead and expand, go ahead and acquire, or do like whatever they want. My case particularly has been working with the government, not of India, but uh, a government outside India. So for me, it's like been really uh, an experience where I've been learning about a new country as like how their policies work and then how their government wants to expand and bring in more investment or stuff into like a particular sector. It's something that's really intrigued me. and i think the learning co- curve over here and to go ahead and learn something you learn in consulting is something that is much different from other uh, interns when you just like probably go and code or stuff or uh, other that right? but with that there's a drawback that on at friday night at 9 i have an office i have a meeting at 9:30 and that is something that goes on with consulting that there are no hours on weekdays but on weekends it's pretty chill uh, but other than that it's not something you could go ahead and expect that you'll get get a 9 to 5 job in consulting it will be start at 9 but it land probably at 11 in the day so it's hectic that way so if you're looking for consulting be ready for that but in the end if you have a knack for probably going ahead and solving problems if you have a knack for is going ahead and interacting with people like understanding problems at a deeper level have this intrigue to like just go ahead and learn more about stuff then i think consulting is the way to go i knew that was something for me and that, that is the reason i probably chose to go ahead and sit into consulting so if you're not some someone who like not interested in all this i don't think then consulting is your way to go because people just take up consulting because like yeah it's fancy it's like you're going around traveling and other reasons but then don't survive over here that is something that you need to understand about yourself if consulting is the way for you think that is something you need to go but talking about the process as well right so can before how the process begins is like you go and get shortlisted and around 25 people are getting shortlisted or get shortlisted by lek consulting and that shortlists vary on like various metrics on your of your cv which is like scores internships that you've done your ecs and your pos that's like cv building that will happen and i think a lot of consulting in that domain and consulting shortlist is the first metric as for the consulting comes to go and like list out people because then at that point of time your cv is the stuff that matters what you've done in the past is what matters at, at over here and other than that i think after you you've been shortlisted is when the real process starts right i think that is after i got shortlisted was the way that now i have to start my consultant and you do not sit start with at least i did not start with my consult prep or consult interview prep before i was getting shortlisted uh, after it was done i knew that now i need to go and prep uh, for like the case prep so in a consulting interview particularly a corner and given a guesstimate or a given a problem of another company to solve and to go and do that i particularly watched case interviews crack that's a youtube channel and uh, it had four to five videos if i remember of one hour each and it well clearly explained as to how to go and solve cases and how do you do guesstimates and how you properly uh, prepare yourself for a consult interview i think that is something i did to begin with after that there was exist like going going out and practicing cases with say a consult partner or uh, a partner in uh, in your in your college and then going out and doing body cases body cases in particularly become very important because that is something companies uh, are teaching you how to do your case for the interview and body cases are sometimes evaluative as well uh, those body cases are something for you to go and learn about the company for the company to learn about you uh, each person that is shortlisted gets a body and body case stuff and i think three to four body cases each person will have and that is something that then becomes important on the day of the interview how well you have learned through those body cases and on the day of the interview of course there are like multiple rounds when you have multiple uh cases that you get again and again it's more about practicing in the end after you get shortlisted or probably now if you want to uh it was mostly the say like going ahead and practicing those cases that did the way for me and i think it was like something a nice experience to go ahead and like learn the structuring and learn the structuring of your thoughts learn the structuring of a case learn how to go ahead and present yourself improve your communication skills in general i think that is something that that case prep 
preparation did for me i think that is something that is what the companies are doing as well how you are able to communicate your thoughts how well you are able to break down the problem because of course there is intuitive thing that everyone has as like this would might be the solution but that's not what companies are looking for companies are looking for your structure and the companies are looking for how well you are able to like just go ahead and present the problem and be able to communicate so i think the way to go ahead often regarding consulting is if you are able to just go ahead and prep nicely uh after watching these case interviews crack videos probably or you know, there's this another book by victor chang which is case interviews so if you go through those and then just go ahead and prep for your uh interviews with someone and just do a lots of cases i think that is one thing that helps you a lot because uh doing cases is something that you can only learn from practice and that practice is something that you can't go ahead and leave out uh and just like rely on probably luck on the last day because it's something that you can't just get in a day or two that probably needs 15 20 days of work and i think that is something that everyone needs to like go ahead and start the preparation once the consult companies are here and when the body is casing so i think that is that was my basic uh, internship experience process and my intern process you know if anything else the OCS team would like me to add Thanks sir for keep sharing your experience. Um so we'll be taking the questions at the end. Please put them in the Q&A box and address them to all the co-hosts. Uh we'll be moving on to uh Ishika and could you please share your experience Ishika? Hi guys, am I audible and visible? Yeah, you are visible and audible. All right, I'm really sorry for the bad camera quality and everything. I will try to have better um <laughs> visibility right so uh, i just came back from work uh, we, i was also in the office and uh, as avagya said there are no hours um and this is really bad lighting but um i hope that i'm not looking too scary so yeah so uh, getting into the whole way uh, also ananya is with me who's the next speaker so she'll be <laughs> she'll be uh, you know adding to the gang very soon i hope you guys don't get bored Uh okay yeah so very quickly about the whole consulting experience I'll tell you very quickly about mine so I'm currently in the Delhi office uh it's been 4 weeks now uh, in fact today was actually the celebratory uh intern day when we were celebrating the uh, end of half of the internship uh anyway so about my case so uh, so within BCG the culture is that uh, you get uh, a fully you you are fully assigned to a very particular case for the entire 2 months and or uh, you have to uh, follow through end to end and ideally you would be allotted a module or something uh, a module is basically where, so so uh, there are very big uh, you know problem statements out there when there is any interaction between a client and a consulting company uh, they the client comes up with a problem or the consulting company uh, you know uh, shows them some sort of an aspiration and they finally come down to a very uh, clearly defined deliverable deliverable which can be pretty uh, massive and uh, the approach to that is broken down into very small pieces um and those pieces are referred to as modules uh, obviously some uh, pieces are more crucial than the others and uh, that's how you know the responsibilities are divided within the case teams so there are uh, all of these teams work in hierarchies so to give you like some sort of a very quick parallel uh, tum log ne dekha hoga ki iit mein there is this uh, ird program the 1 2 3 4 program jisme first second third fourth year se there is one 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 person and they work together on a research project that's exactly what a case team uh, you know functions like and there are uh, people across the hierarchy so uh, yeah so now getting into my personal experience uh, the case that i was working on was for a, a very large uh, indian it services player uh, that wanted to enter the japan market uh, sorry they already exist in the japan market but they're not big there so it was more of a uh, market entry slash more of a growth strategy case and uh, i was doing that uh, for the last 4 weeks uh, however i would be joining a new case uh, monday onwards and that's going to be about uh, the uh, bidding rights for a uh, for, for a sports uh, you know board uh, for the televising rights basically so that's another so, so just to show you uh, you know very quickly how diverse uh, these problem statements happen to be because sometimes people really wonder you know what kind of services does a consulting company provide what kind of challenges do they solve 
so uh, in some cases they you know are turning around something that's not going right with the company you will see a lot of the here, see and hear a lot about that as well sometimes they uh, show a company a certain aspiration and they help them achieve that and uh, sometimes there are uh, very specific uh, problems that that are very time bound also that they go ahead and try to solve so this is a very quick uh, you know overview of what uh, consulting uh, clients and cases look and sound like now uh, very objectively i i think sarvagya covered very well you know the uh, uh, you know the personal attributes that are required uh, for a field like consulting and you you really do have to uh, go in a little bit and search within yourself whether uh, those are things that uh, excite you uh, there's a lot of uh, things that happen dynamically um, and uh, it's not necessarily a very a relaxed job in terms of the uh, logistics you know the time the travel and this so on and so forth but uh, there are also amazing aspects also in terms of uh, you know really having a lot of new situations uh, to go through and um, i think across my last four weeks what i have seen is that uh, it really is a client serving industry which means that uh, a lot revolves around the client what their needs are what their capabilities are kitna uh, wo change absorb kar sakte hain kitna wo implement kar sakte hain uh, how receptive they are to new ideas right and uh, you can't change the client you have to accept them for what they are and still try to help uh, solve their problem so that's um, that's a quick overview now getting more specifically into the uh, internship process and how do you go about getting these consulting internships so uh, i think sir vagya gave a very good uh, overview of what the process looks like but uh, i'll just uh, go on to add a little bit so uh, just to give you guys some context before last year uh, the entire uh, you know consulting interview process was entirely guesstimate based so they'd call you in they'd look at your cv they'd look uh, ask you some questions about your cv and then they'd ask you maybe one guesstimate maybe a very small case that's how internships in consulting used to be but uh, ever since last year what uh, they have become a lot more formal and they uh, have a more standardized format like the placements which means that there's a lot of case solving involved uh, so for bcg there are two rounds in the first round it's very likely that you'll get either a basic case or a guesstimate and in the second round you'll get a more detailed uh, case now how do you go about for both guesstimate and case prep so i would say that for uh, guesstimates um you should definitely first you know the the very basic thing that you can do and that's how i started is just going on google and searching for certain blogs you know there are lots of websites and blogs out there jahan pe solved guesstimates hote hain just read through them to just get an idea of what these really are next uh once you get thoda sa confidence in guesstimates you would go on to you know look into different kind of case categories and how do you solve them what the frameworks are etc so iske liye there are lots of books available uh, pdfs online and you can reach out to any one of us we'd be happy to share you know a folder of the same so there's one called uh, cic case interviews crack which is written by two uh, iit bombay folks it's very popular especially among the iits because you know it's written by iit and so they understand the consulting process for iits so uh, that's one book you can refer to it is fairly it's like of a good level i wouldn't call it a very easy or very difficult um, so that's a good level it's a it's a good place to at least master the profit and loss wale cases which are the most standard type of cases that you uh, are expected to very well you know to be very comfortable with then uh, apart from this there's this book called the case compendium by srcc it's something that i personally recommend because i feel ki uh, the kind of cases in that are pretty uh, you know they get they give you a hang of the whole thing and uh, they're also presented in a very uh, convenient to understand format and the other thing is ki if you have any friend family members siblings who could just sit jinko tum bas bata do ki aap ye do pages dekh lo आप मुझसे ये क्वेश्चन पूछ लो एंड यू नो दे कैन डू अ लॉट ऑफ मॉक इंटरव्यूज विद यू सो अ लॉट ऑफ द होल इंटरव्यू प्रोसेस इज अबाउट योर कंपोजर एंड हाउ क्लियर हेडेड एंड फोकस्ड यू कैन स्टे सो दैट मींस यू नीड टू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस 
तो नो मैटर विच केस बुक यू रेफर टू और हाउ मेनी केसेस यू डू वॉट मैटर्स मोस्ट इज दैट यू हैव वेरी रियल लाइफ सिम्यूलेशन ऑफ एन इंटरव्यू बिकॉज वेन यू आर एक्चुअली पुट ऑन द स्पॉट यू नो द थिंग्स कैन चेंज ड्रामेटिकली एंड वेरी सिंपल कैलकुलेशन कैन गो रॉन्ग इन थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो दैट वॉज केस कंपेडियम एंड द लास्ट बुक दैट आई वुड जस्ट मैंशन आई डोंट थिंक इट्स वेरी यू नो इम्पॉर्टेंट टू रेफर टू दैट और मास्टर दैट फॉर योर इंटर्नशिप प्रोसेस इट्स मोर ऑफ अ प्लेसमेंट टेक्स यू नो रेफरेंस बुक बट इट्स कॉल्ड डे वन एंड आई थिंक दैट दैट्स ऑल्सो अ गुड रिसोर्स इट हैज स्लाइटली हायर लेवल केसेस दे कैन बी स्लाइटली मोर ट्रिकी बट there also a great you know uh, way to just challenge yourself so i think i think cbse textbooks mein 10th standard hota na hot questions hote the high order thinking skills um it's kind of kind of like that um apart from this uh, yeah very quickly about the three case categories there's profit and loss there's market entry and market growth and then there are unconventional cases so uh, don't get too worried i'm just giving you like a i'm just this uh, this is supposed to be an informative session so i'm just trying to give full disclosure about you know what what all there is you don't have to cover everything but it's good to be aware so i would say guesstimates and profit and loss are the first and foremost priority uh uske baad gradually get into market entry and market growth and uh, last mein unconventional cases are something that just happen to you that you don't really do because by the time you've had so much practice you learn how to develop that framework and i know that this sounds very ridiculous bahut logon ne mujhe hi bola tha ki after a point tum framework banana seekh jaogi and i didn't understand what that meant what would change all of a sudden but uh, believe me something does you do develop uh, the ability to uh, break a problem down into logical steps so uh, that will happen don't worry about the third category at all only look at the first step i think uh, because one step leads to another and uh, a little apart from all of this um, i will let the other speakers talk to you about the buddy sessions and everything the only other thing that i'll quickly talk about is the cv making because i know that uh, in consulting cv making is considered a very big daunting task ki you know how do you go about it kya kya likhna hai por hai ki nahi hai cg hai nahi hai so there are some very basic concerns about this i think you guys already know a lot of things so you can go about uh, you know actually uh referring to people and talking to your seniors about that uh what i'll say though is that uh starting early helps uh because you just have more uh time uh later on what happens is kitna pressure build ho jata you know closer to the deadline that uh even though on a normal day you would have been able to uh structure your thoughts properly and put across your achievements well us time pe because of that pressure you just uh, get a little confused and also because at that time you know you are sending out your cv to a lot of people for feedback everybody is suggesting also so many changes and you have a very small window to implement all of them so all of that just builds a lot of anxiety so i would strongly suggest ki even if ocs has not yet opened up their portal just uh, put down your cv and your own words in a google doc so that it's there for you like have a master doc ready and uh, have this ready for all the profiles you're preparing for it's just one headache that you won't have to uh, you know go through later on and yeah i think that's it i will take whatever questions you guys have towards the end and now i'll hand it over to ananya thanks a lot shikha yeah so uh we want to ananya can please uh, share experience with us uh sorry yeah, ishika and i are in the same room so there was some echo so my journey was a bit unconventional my entry into consulting uh consulting was my first preference but i obviously wanted to have some backup as well so i had coding shortlists as well and I, and i started preparing for the cases only after i got my shortlist uh, at with bcg and lek and all so i would also suggest the same to everyone else because it's a bit dicey so ha- try to have some backup but it is not necessary that you need to have a backup because as far as i know ishika did not have any backup she was only she was very confident so she was uh, only going ahead with uh, consulting so i think sarvagya and ishika have covered most of it uh that there is to cover uh about the cv thing so there are five 
main components there's cg there's scholastic achievements there's internships there is pors and then there is ecas please don't write uh, projects into it because some people do that and really like your consulting cv doesn't need projects you should not uh, write your projects into your consulting cv it looks like you don't uh, know anything about the consulting profile right so there's that so uh, so i did my case prep in one week and what really helped were were the sessions with my buddy at the time i didn't know that uh, it they were evaluative so i was being rather frank with her i was like you know just let me know where to study from which sites to refer and all and she was really helpful and i think that's what uh, really worked for me both the buddies at dcg and lk were really helpful and they really guided we, me with all of that and i think uh, both of my interviews went well which is sort of unconventional for someone who's like not done any prep and then like after shortlisting you're prepare you're preparing and even then to do well i i think that it can be done so it's just that you should really focus on your buddy sessions because they know what's happening there with the firm and they exactly know what the firm is looking for apart from that yes consulting has its uh, perks so right now we are sitting in hired both of us so we we'll, we we've been in hired for one month we'll stay there for another month and okay there are flight tickets and all and there are case team dinners at least for me there are <laughs> so i'm i'm lucky enough to be based uh, on an offline project so my project is based out of chennai and today i had uh, today i'm in delhi because there was an intern day session at bcg otherwise i am in chennai and uh, we go to the client site so it's like a proper consulting uh, experience for me uh but i think the experience also depends uh, upon your teammates so my teammates are like super polite super helpful but i suppose that if my but i know that there are other types of people as well here right so if you're someone who who gets really worked up when things don't go your way you might want to rethink on consulting because everyone is not super polite here everyone is not super helpful they might just you know disregard you as an intern here so if 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 that's uh not what you're looking for if that's something that you can't uh tolerate then you might want to go for coding and all because in general it's like sort of more chilled out apart from that there are long hours so like my team sits in the office from 9 to 9 and they think it's like super chill ki oh it's only a 12 hour job so you should know that there can be days uh that they'll expect you to be there till like 12 or something as well you don't you only you get good hotels but you only get to go there for sleeping that's it so if if your priorities are good hotels and stuff then do remember that it's they are only for sleeping and maybe for breakfast that's it and uh with consulting so of course there's excel and all apart from that there's slides and all that we work upon and consultants really do stress upon slides and on certain days i'm like ki yaar kya kar rahi hu main ek slide pe itna time kon lagata hai no one would even notice matlab what am i doing but that's how it is they right? they really do focus a lot on slide making everything should look pretty everything should be crisp and all and they really do focus on communication that your oral as well as written communication it, it should be to the point etc etc so that's what consulting entails if you're someone who likes to talk to people who likes to think uh, of you know solving problems in a logical fashion then you should go for consulting but that's just my opinion uh, just hotels and flights won't cut it for you in the long run and uh, in the interview uh, as well i don't think you need to memorize any frameworks as such you just need to portray yourself as a logical person like you know there's there should be some coherence some flow to what you're suggesting the interviewer should get an insight uh, into your thinking that this that okay i've posed the question and this person is able to take a holistic view of the problem uh, and then actually think in sort of the right direction if if it's not the right direction at least there should be some logic behind it and whatever steps you follow during case solving there should be some coherence it it should mean like abhi you're talking about one thing and suddenly you jump on to another thing without any connection so that's about cracking interviews from my side and that's it thank you
thanks for sharing your experience Ananya. Uh, that was very insightful and now we i would like uh, naman to come and share uh, their experience with us Okay, now we'll be joining in just a few minutes. Sorry for the delay. Right, uh, please put in your questions in the uh, Q&A box uh, for the while. Okay, it looks like it will be a while, so why don't we start off with the questions. Uh, so the first question that I am pretty sure a lot of uh, the students have is what is the CG criteria? Like, is there a CG barrier that the students need to have crossed to be shortlisted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. 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 All right, cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so about the CG, uh, so I think most definitely there is a uh, expectation that you are above seven. That's quite clear out there, I think. But uh, very frankly, uh, you know, uh, I, I, we would strongly recommend being above eight. Uh, that's just a safer space to be in when it comes to shortlisting. Also, very frankly, because there is, it's a, you know, we have very few consulting companies that obviously now they have increased, but uh, in the past also it has been ki bhoat kam consulting companies aati hai, bhoat kam openings hai, which means that it gets very competitive. So just more, not, not so much because the company has any very strong bias, but more so because jo talent pool hai, usme there are so many people who are above eight who are also applying. So that just makes it more difficult for you to compete within your peers and with this so, so that's one aspect that's like from the external aspect now from more internal to the company what their expectations are uh, they do expect you to be uh, to have a good CG which does has nothing to do with uh, your you know academic uh, caliber or anything like that but just to show that you are a hardworking individual and that you have a certain level of uh, you know um intelligence in general uh, although we do know i think hum sab jante hain ki you know cg is not very directly reflective of how smart you are or you aren't but it but it is something that takes effort to maintain and uh, i do think ki they look at your cg as a you know performance indicator in that sense so yeah that's the honest answer but yeah also very honestly so so you could think of it as brackets so 8 to 8.5 would probably be one bracket anything in that range is probably considered to be equivalent again 8.5 to 9 and then 9 plus 
but um, definitely when you are nine plus, so uh, that's a very big spike, which means that baki cheezon mein tum thoda sa light le sakte ho. Um, eight point five to nine, you do need something to pull you up in your extra curriculums or in your uh, you know projects or past internships or so on and so forth, and um. For your if if you are between eight and eight point five, also a very good space to be in. Nothing to be worried about. But uh, then generally, you also have to show your strength in other things to show that you are a more holistic and uh, well-rounded individual. Thanks, Arka. Thanks, Shita. Uh, thank you for answering and clearing that out. Uh, now we would like Naman to share his experience with us. Um. Hi, I hope I'm audible, and I hope there's not a lot of background noise. Yeah, you're audible. It's clear. Okay, great. Um, so hello everyone. I'm Naman. I'm interning at Nomura. So my intern experience, um, from a consulting perspective, was um essentially first um making a resume. I hadn't started case preparation, um, before I you know made my resume and submitted it to firms. Um, so um there are like I think all of this. Must have been discussed before I start speaking. So essentially, there are like um three day one consulting firms and there's one day two consulting firm. So um like while applying for those firms, um um of course you'll be making your resume and that is the only selection criteria that is used. Um they don't have any tests or anything as such. So um from my perspective, um I um started working on my resume. I mean. Working on your resume is sort of like um a gradual process which you do over the last two years or so. Um, there's nothing like um a resume that you know can uh be built totally in like say a week or so. So you work on points and stuff um throughout your IIT period and maybe you can also include something good that has happened, like something you achieved um before coming to IIT as well. Of course, so so like. You start off with resumes by um you know asking your seniors um for resumes uh um like related seniors as in like suppose if you're into sports, then you should um probably you know go ahead and approach seniors who are from a similar background as yours, so that they can you know um because um so that they can you know provide you with resume and you get to know how to like frame whatever you have achieved till now in sports in the form of a resume. So that is how you get started with it. Um, once you have your resume built, um, at least in my case, um, I waited for the short lists before I started off my case preparation because that is what my seniors had asked me for. And from a from an internship point of view, I mean, obviously having an early start would help. Um, so if you're like absolutely very clear that you want to do consulting only, and that um. You have a decent shot at getting a short list. In that case, um, obviously, I mean, if you want to start off a little earlier, then you can start off with your case preparation a little earlier. But in my case, um, um, I started off with my case preparation only after you know BCG announced its short lists. BCG was the first consulting firm to announce short lists, and BCG, um. So um out of the four day one and day two um consulting firms the those are like BCG, LEK, um, Strategy and and Nomura. So LEK and BCG have buddy programs. So once my LEK and BCG buddy program started off, that is when I you know started off solving cases. So essentially um like when you prepare for jobs um the case preparation process is a little more elaborate elaborate you form job groups and stuff. Although um at least in our year um I'm pretty sure um nobody formed job groups per se. So what we did for case preparation so is there are some online resources that are available. There are Victor Singh videos, and then there are um a few books like case interviews, cracked and case in point. So um essentially what you do or like how you go about case prepping is um by you know asking some senior or of yours. Or say a good friend of yours to do a case with you. Um, an exact idea of this, or like what you know, doing a case looks like. That can um, uh, for that you should either watch a YouTube video. There are plenty available online, or you should actually ask some senior of your case. Sir, I'm I'm going to case kara do. So um, um, what you'll get a gist of it, like what doing a case looks like. 
in a case interview by actually like looking at it so um essentially um I, i'll just give you a brief overview of how i mean one can go about um you know formulating a strategy for case preparation um what do you um start off with is first of all um like every there are like three or four categories of cases that are to be done you just find a set of problems for each of these four category of um cases like there's a market entry uh, category of cases there's profitability there's um guesstimates and then there are unconventional cases there are four category of cases and um in each of these a standard approach is to be followed of course there's room for creativity in all of them but in general there's a standard approach that is followed um and we um, sort of like this standard approach is called a framework and um you use those frameworks used to like solve these cases so um these frameworks um at least for the cases that are asked in internship interviews they're not very elaborate i mean the kind of cases that you'll be given um they're not very difficult so um yeah so um uh, i think um uh, you uh, i mean uh, if like uh, if i if i were to give my suggestions um you can probably wait for a little time before you start off with your case prep se- sessions or like case preparation simply because of fact that um at times um consulting can be a little random um per se as in since it's completely uh, like based on a resume short list which in itself is a subjective thing right i mean if you think of it um resumes are judged subjectively there there's no objective way of judging resumes so um unless you're absolutely sure that you want to do consulting and consulting only you can probably do something like counter coding at time and wait for the shortlists to roll in and once the shortlists come in and if you think that you've been shortlisted by the firm that you wanted to get shortlisted by then go for case prep full power but till then you should uh, you might want to focus on things like counter coding i did not do counter coding i applied for very few firms overall i i think throughout my internship process i applied for only seven firms i got shortlisted for four out of them all four of them were consulting only so um yeah so um essentially um this is uh, what it was like i did cases after that um after i got my shortlist with my buddy and with my friends and yes then the interviews rolled in all of this was a process of around 2 weeks um i think um uh, sometime around 23rd 24th of july or some date like that was um our shortlist third week of july or fourth week of july in the last week of july we got our shortlists and uh in the first week of august we had our interview so over a one week period um we did a lot of cases um me and my friends and that is how we prepared um for consulting so yeah that was it um okay uh thank you naman for sharing uh, your experience with us i actually thank all of the panelists for joining us today and now we would move on to the q and a session so uh, like uh, everybody has mentioned about the cvs but uh, what is important is uh, the people the students have wanted to ask that uh, if the projects are done in economics or finance fields should that be avoided or should that be written in the cv or not as far as i understand uh like your cv should not have that headex it would be great if you've done it as an internship you can put it under your internships or i think you could uh, put it in as a scholastic achievement that you know uh, had a report strategized analyzed etc etc which got published xyz with the results so i would suggest that uh, what do you think ishka right so i also think you mean ki tumne in general koi project kiya hai i see a lot of people who have done projects with uh, iims or isb etc uh, like some people do research projects in their core fields um, so that would be with like an engineering institute abroad or within india and some people also do these um, finance and uh, economics wale uh, projects so what i would say is that um, quite frankly i think that there is a reason that, that there is a supremacy of your research projects over your uh, financial economics and i'll tell you why because uh, a research project that is you know whatever in an area that is aligned with your branch or whatever uh, just shows ki 
तुम स्मार्ट हो दैट्स बेसिकली हाउ कंसल्टिंग कंपनीज इवैल्यूएट यू एंड आई मीन आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू बीट अराउंड द बुश अबाउट दैट अम द अदर काइंड ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स द फाइनेंस एंड इकोनॉमिक्स वंस आर कंपैरेटिवली अ लिटिल इजियर टू कम बाय बिकॉज़ अ लॉट ऑफ दीस कॉलेजेस आर लुक for uh, in terms to help them with some sort of data analysis or regression analysis so it is slightly easier to come by which is why relative to these uh, other research research projects wo thode se kam uh, valued hote hain so if you are in that stage right now when you are uh, looking out for internships i would say what matters uh, I, i would strongly recommend Okay, uh, Ishika, uh, you are not audible. Uh, we can't hear you. So, uh, till then, till we are able to hear them again, let's move on to the next question. Uh, so, right. Uh, uh, so one another question that we have is: Are consulting firms more biased, more biased towards inactives and depth soft clubs? So. Can uh can Naman or or Ananya answer this question? Um. Okay. Um. I'll take this one. Um. So. Um. I am a debater myself. So. Um. And most people I know from DevSoc who applied for consulting firms and had um a decent enough CGPA. Yes, they did get shortlisted. um so essentially um it's not that only debsoc get shortlists i think there were six or seven people from debating who got shortlists in bcg but the total number of shortlists was 25 so um although i mean although i mean of course there is a holistic um evaluation of cvs that is done but um there is a trend that is like obviously it's like अनकैनी मतलब यू कैन कम्प्लीटली डिनाई इट कि मतलब ऐसा कुछ हो रहा है मे बी ऐसा कुछ हो रहा है सर्टन सर्टन कंपनीज हैव सर्टन प्रेफरेंसेस टूवर्ड्स सर्टन काइंड ऑफ ई सी एज और सर्टन काइंड ऑफ पी ओ आर्स एज अपोज टू अदर्स ऑल दो फाइनली आइडिया इज सो एसेंशियली लाइक इफ यू ब्रेक डाउन अ सी वे दैट हैज फोर पार्ट राइट द फर्स्ट इज योर स्कॉल्स और नेक्स्ट लास्टिक अचीवमेंट सेक्शन that has nothing to do with what club you are associated with that basically has things like whether or not you have an iid day semester merit award do are you a dr do you have something like in case you are giving to it those are scholastic achievements so that has nothing to do with your club the second part of your cv is your internship section which again has um, nothing to do absolutely with what club you are associated with third part of your cv is your eca section um where of course um uh um clubs or like something like that comes in because um you get ecs in like whatever activity you are involved in but um it's not just depths of that gets um any kind of a buy, uh, like uh, uh, some kind of recognition by consulting firms uh, i mean i've seen people from sports backgrounds and who had like decent enough of ecs like i think all of them that i knew were eventually shortlisted i I know people who worked with PSP and who worked fairly well, and they got shortlisted. I know people from quizzing, um, who you know had very good QC ECs, or not even very good QC ECs. They had like standard, um, you know, quizzer profiles, and they got shortlisted. The idea is, in the ACA section, um, something should stand out, right? One advantage that I think that debating people eventually end up having is that. There is a large number of debating tournaments that are organized at the institute level and at the 
you know external level as well uh, so they get to participate and they sort of like accumulate a certain number of cv points that makes them look as if they're a good debater and they spent a substantial amount of their um, college life trying to excel in debating so if you can like create some kind of an impact this way through some other activity for example um, i know many pfc seniors who are able to you know garner at least certain number of uh, not exactly a certain num- i mean who were able to show through their cvs that they were dedicated towards the activity and they did something worthwhile during their time in iit to in that activity and um, they made that portion of their cv reflect the fact that they were very enthusiastic towards the activity and that helped them get shortlisted so the idea is you should um, basically the ec section of your cv instead of saying that you have participated in seven different things for example if you have seven lines of ecs or say 10 lines of ecs and if everything is like one or two lines for example if you play the guitar if your cv is like one line of guitar one line of debating one line of quizzing one line of um um i don't know uh, playing badminton and then two lines of write creative writing or something like that that does not create an impact you might think that at the end of the day you're coming off as someone who is very diverse which in itself is good i mean um cv evaluations obviously subjective so someone might be impressed and the some kinds these kinds of cvs are, might also get shortlisted but in general like what i have also been told by my seniors is you should probably focus on creating more of an impact through one or two things um the idea is um through your cv instead of like uh, uh, your cv coming off as the cv of someone who has like tried hands at many different things without actually devoting um a lot of energy or like a lot of time towards one thing you should come off as someone who has tried to excel in one or two things if you are if you play cricket and um if you have uh, like dedicated yourself to instigate or something like that then you will have enough um, material to put in your cv to make it stand out as one of a good cricketer and that is essentially the idea um that has to be conveyed so deaf people have an advantage in the sense they are able to garner a larger volume of ecs so i think that is why there is a trend um although there's like no substantive reason to believe that there's a clear bias towards splitting okay uh, that's someone for let me that can i please add to this answer yeah 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 so very quick you know so in every sing- guys matlab in every single consulting related session where even in company presentations and this happens across the country uh, this is a very standard question ki uh, are firms biased towards debating uh, especially across iits you know so uh, there's a reason why this question pops up so much it's not specific to the iit delhi campus you guys should know that so there is uh, a reason why you know if something happens once then maybe it's a coincidence but when this thing is happening all across so you do tend to believe that uh, you know there's a pattern here and for this inference builds and i think uh, naman is partly correct uh, because of activities like debsoc you just have more eca points so that's one uh, you know advantage that they have over the others uh, but another uh, i think aspect of it is key um, through activities like debsoc and actus so on and so forth um, and actually very specifically these two what happens is that a lot of your seniors and your interactions with people uh, are with people who are in these fields so they could be your seniors they could be um, seniors who are either already in these firms uh, or they are aspiring to go to these firms so just by sheer interaction with them that culture gets instilled and um, that's one who that's how, that's where the aspiration comes from uh, but uh, it's also true that ultimately when these firms come to hire to these colleges uh, then uh, it is in fact the the alums of that college that get involved in the process which means that a lot of them are people who are, have been a part of uh, debating or an actus and uh, when they are going ahead and evaluating so obviously they try their very best i mean there is no conscious uh, you know effort to uh, exclude people who are not from uh, you know these clubs uh, but uh, definitely because of familiarity and a certain uh, amount of relatability there has been uh, you know this pattern that has developed and uh, because you know you guys voice it every time everybody you know uh, is trying to voice it and we've also seen ki a change bhi ho raha hai we see people from a lot of different backgrounds from different uh, you know extracurricular backgrounds or even like academic backgrounds are now getting 
into consulting so it is kind of changing but it's not uh false ki exist karta hai. and uh just to you know back it up with a small example so i was just very closely interacting with uh one of the people on my case team uh here at bcg so she's a she's a i i am lucknow alum and uh, she is currently involved with i am lucknow's recruitment process so just to give you some perspective she shared with me ki jaise ki hamare yahan there's this uh, notion ki debsoc ka ek bias hota hai waise hi for example i am lucknow mein social impact ka hota hai so in fact people have like a separate social impact section on their cv and uh, people who have you know a rich uh, you know content in that section they tend to uh, be prioritized to some extent so that's also not a conscious effort but it's a trend that builds so what i'm trying to show here is ki yes uh, because of the nature of the activity you get certain advantage but also because of the legacy that builds um, there is an advantage and uh, if you are part of these communities and you are uh, making use of that advantage there's nothing wrong with it but at the same time if you are not part of these uh, clubs or associations then that does not mean that you should uh, give up in any sense but uh, it's also uh, not fair to be completely negligent of the trend uh, obviously uh, accept it and uh, go ahead and put more effort to build those connections with people with seniors maybe uh, you don't need to know them through those extracurricular clubs you can try to connect with them separately and get some uh, you know time with them to try to understand what kind of work they're doing and uh, they will appreciate it because you know consulting is one of the rare uh, you know uh, i think careers yeah options jahan pe pura body system hota hai so they are expected to uh, entertain uh, you know uh this kind of interaction from juniors so even if you are not from those clubs you will have to put in a little bit of extra effort to go out and reach uh, to you know reach out to these people and try to understand uh what the whole consulting thing is about thanks a lot shita uh that was very helpful so when we are discussing cvs uh, the the one important question is which Uh, section is more important uh, the por or the eca section that's a doubt that a lot of students have if any one of you could expand on that hi so uh, about the pors and the ecas so i think you need to show that you're skilled in like three of the five components of the cv at least that that is what was uh, what i was told in during my intern session so if your ecas are not that great however you are in a good position uh, with respect to pors i think it can work so it isn't like you know just to show uh, but don't do it you know i have 10 pors so i only list down my pors and then add two lines for ecas that doesn't look good have an equitable distribution okay highlight your pors maybe you could like you could add a line one or, you could add one or two lines extra if your if your pors are your strength and vice versa for ecas but don't disregard anything if if you're not that good at ecas then pors will work and vice versa if your ecas are better thanks anna Okay, one more question that we have is project uh, project management different from uh, consulting. If yes, then how so? Uh, can any one of you expand on that? Yeah, guys. So, uh, project management is. Uh... definitely different and it depends a lot on what industry you're talking about right so uh, project management can be within startups it can be within uh, fmcg companies it can be within basically any company and the kind of work kind uh, de- depends strongly on the scope of the industry but very broadly speaking if you're trying to compare it with consulting to consulting mein um, the kind of problem statements change a lot project management has 
uh, a very clear uh, statement ki there is a task or there is a process line of some sorts um, or there is a product of some sorts and you have to work on either the supply chain of the product or the uh, marketing or sales of the product and you're basically working with the team and things are very different you're, you're basically managing that function right consulting is more of a uh, dedicated problem solving in which depending on the scope of the problem your approach will change and uh, you don't necessarily have to be involved with other related functions another different thing is ki consulting may you go through from one case to another the average duration of a case would probably be about um 6 to 12 months or something of that sort obviously there are much shorter and much longer cases also but that means ki the industry the a kind of work everything changes even within the same industry you could be working on very different things within within the banking sector you could be working on either a new financial instrument or you could be working on the uh, hr management within one bank or you could be working on the organizational structure of the entire bank so uh, and, and similarly across industries you can replicate all of these things uh, you could be working on changing the carbon footprint you could be working on uh, how do you hire more people how do you uh, retain talent so I, i'm getting a little bit too much into hr but just to give you a gist of it project management mein your scope is very well defined as in it's it's very fixed rather and obviously uh, there are challenges that come up and about and you have targets set from time to time when you're trying to achieve them but um, yeah that i hope that answers the question if if you know whoever put forth that question if you have any follow ups on this then we'd be happy to uh, entertain those and i think so, i think finance was also mentioned so uh, i think finance is an entirely different area on its own because uh, so there, there are different aspects within finance there is accounting there's audits there's uh, credit risk management there's uh, investment banking and what not so there's a vast variety and uh, it's too broad a field for me even to describe i'm not an expert in finance but uh, but yeah and it's very very different from consulting obviously there are some sort of um, there are intersections uh, because uh, many times you could be consulting within finance or there could be uh, you know finance also within consulting uh, because you could be working on uh, you know helping the ministry formulate its budget and things like that so uh, there are intersections but they are broadly two very different uh, separate areas uh, thank you and uh, we'll be taking the last question so uh, that is can uh, the sura projects be added uh, in the internship section if you can elaborate on that right so um i think that uh as far as i know any project that you've done within iit delhi cannot be mentioned in the internship section uh if you are making a project section then perhaps you could mention it there but if any kind of project has been done within iit delhi and there's no external affiliation involved then that does not qualify as an internship okay uh thanks a lot uh, for being here and now we have come to the end of our event uh Uh, each and every tip that you have shared was quite informative and valuable, and I thank you all for joining the event. Uh, we we hope we were able to provide you a platform where you will where you will uh, able to ask your doubts and clear them. So thank you for coming, and we'll be ending the session now.